everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today I present to you 50 things about T-Bob. So without any further ado, let us begin. T-Bob was an absolute pun machine, quite literally, making comical observations and quickly taking every opportunity to make light of a situation. Is this what they mean by getting teed off? I sure feel like a booming idiot. I'm just going to turn you into a TV camera. Oh, just call me TV Bob. Whoever was driving this thing will have to be retrained. They don't call me Ski Bob for nothing. It's just an illusion. You know what they say easy come, easy glow. If you're looking for something to do, try the Grand Bazaar. Uh, I don't want to visit anything bizarre. It couldn't have gotten out. The lid wasn't even ajar. It's bad for your skin to get too much ultraviolet radiation. This is really a burning issue. Not again. Oh, well, I thought it was funny. In a lot of his earlier UK comic book appearances, T-Bob resembles his action figure. But as the cartoon gained popularity, his animation model would eventually become the version used. In the episode The Lipazana Mystery, Scott Tracker turns T-Bob into a popcorn popper. And in the PSA for that very same episode, we see that T-Bob is actually strong enough to take a powerful kick from a horse's hind legs. Look at him go! T-Bob can extend his limbs to great lengths, usually calling upon this talent when his friends need saving. Alongside Scott Tracker, T-Bob is killed in the episode The Star Chariot. only to be saved by aliens and brought back to life. I made an entire video about that, so be sure to check it out. He was created by Scott Tracker, son of mask leader Matt Tracker, and T-Bob was happy to acknowledge that Scott was his master, at least when it meant that he could tease Scott and get away with it. So mush! Okay! Stop it, T-Bob! You did that on purpose! I'm a computer! I just followed orders! Conversely, the UK Mask comic stated that Alex Sector built T-Bob, which would make more sense, to a degree. That said, I still prefer that he was created by Scott Tracker. There are two distinct designs for T-Bob, the widely known cartoon version and the action figure version, which was far more static in design. This is more of a personal fact, but I actually own a cartoon accurate T-Bob figure, thanks to the talents of action figure customizer Bjorn Kortoff. The UK Mars comic would receive so much fan art of T-Bob that, on occasion, the fan art page would be dedicated to just the robotic sidekick. T-Bob is oddly highly waterproof, and water filling the innermost parts of his circuitry does not seem to bother him. However, ice cream seems to have a very different effect on him. T-Bob was voiced by Graham McKenna, who would also voice Brad Turner, Calhoun Burns, Julio Lopez, and my favorite random character, Johan, who takes great delight in T-Bob's silliness. If that's the ocean, I'm waving bye-bye. <laughs> Little machine friend, you needn't be afraid. Little machine friend? <laughs> he sounds like Grover. Speaking of Graham McKenna, his initial voice for T-Bob differs from what we would eventually hear. Here's the original voice. It's not the kind of place I want to go. Uh, that mouth, it looks like it's screaming. And here's the more commonly used voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I get nervous when I see a crocodile in the dictionary. 
Although appearing in every episode of season one, when the vastly different 10 episode second season came around, he made one single non-talking appearance in a PSA. The T in T-Bob is actually short for thingama, you know, thingamabob, although this fact rarely made it into any mask canons. In the UK, the Masked comic ran until March of 1989 as its own comic for 80 issues and then combined with the Eagle comic for 22 issues. And yes, I'll be making a video all about that at some point. The very final panel of the very final Mask story actually shows T-Bob. Yes, even in 1989, he was still taking center stage. Well, maybe not center stage, kind of off to the right. It should come as no surprise that T-Bob's eyes can actually act as a camera and take photographs, as seen in the episodes Mystery of the Rings and Vanishing Point. Though in the episode The Creeping Terror, T-Bob seems to be carrying a plethora of cameras. Odd. T-Bob actually gets on well with most animals, except this particular monkey who seemed to have it in for poor old T-Bob. In the episode Secret of the Andes, T-Bob is mistaken for the god of prosperity, Tamula, by an elderly priest named Tupac. The episode ends with T-Bob returning to his friends and revealing an ancient artifact that he possibly procured from El Dorado, the mythical lost city of gold. Although many on the mask team mock T-Bob for his cowardice, the little robot has saved the day on numerous occasions and even saved the lives of mask agents, most notably in the episode Dragonfire, when some poisonous flowers seek to end the lives of Matt Tracker, Scott Tracker and Julio Lopez. T-Bob can function without his outer shell, although to him it's a form of nakedness and so he hides himself and maybe for our own sanity, that's a good thing. T-Bob, under the supervision of a gravely ill Matt Tracker, flies Thunderhawk in the episode The Everglades Oddity, and even attacks Venom with the vehicle's weapons. Although Scott and T-Bob love to poke fun at one another, and at times seem to be at odds, in the episode Deadly Blue Slime, in order to save Scott, T-Bob sacrifices himself to the titular Deadly Blue Slime. Thankfully, as we learn, T-Bob is safe as the protoplasm only devours organic material. Much like Scott, T-Bob is a member of the Boy Scouts of America, although given that he's a robot, shouldn't that be Robot Scouts of America? In issue 54 of the UK Mars comic, we see T-Bob become superpowered. Illustrated to perfection by Ron Smith, T-Bob is depicted rather fearsomely, though rather predictably, the effects wear off by the end of the story. Ooh. In the 1980s, as with most people, T-Bob loved rocking a Walkman. Rather amazingly, and it's something that many people haven't noticed over the years, in one PSA, we see T-Bob foolishly stick a fork in a live toaster. When he is subsequently electrocuted, we get a good look at his internal design. Although Miles Mayhem and his fellow Venom agents stumble upon T-Bob in numerous episodes, they never seem to recognize him or the fact that a young boy and his robotic sidekick show up during many of their plans to overthrow the governments of the world. As seen in the very first episode of the series, even though he is a vehicle, T-Bob can drive, kind of. Interestingly, in the US, the figures of T-Bob and Scott were packaged on a card, whereas in the UK and Europe, they were packaged in a box. In the episode The Golden Goddess, T-Bob attempts to overpower an agitated elephant. It doesn't go well. T-Bob becomes the star of the show in the episode Blackout, becoming an electrical conductor in order to combat Venom, and looking rather awesome doing so. T-Bob is mistaken by a young girl as a ride, 
The experience is clearly so traumatic for the little robot that when the two encounter one another again, T-Bob flees at record speed. One of T-Bob's more bizarre conversions occurs when Scott turns him into a snowplow of sorts. Actually, it's somewhat of a cruel conversion. Oddly, the conversion also sees T-Bob act as a hairdryer. T-Bob makes a rather startling cameo in an episode of Galaxy Rangers. There he is. T-Bob is oddly ticklish, as demonstrated in the episode The Ultimate Weapon, when Alex Sector places a cyclonic disruptor neutralizer inside his circuitry. More notably, T-Bob's sensitivity is on full show in the episode Green Nightmare, when an insect crawls inside of him, causing him to physically go crazy. In a montage of the tracker's visit to Japan, we see a shot of T-Bob seemingly proclaiming his love to two women. In the Las Vegas-based episode The Counterclockwise Caper, numerous scenes have T-Bob speaking backwards. Thankfully, with technology at our fingertips, we can easily reveal what T-Bob was actually saying. Wow! I never saw a roller coaster do this before. Wow! I never saw a roller coaster do this before. Oh, I never saw a roller coaster do that either. Oh, I'm going backwards. Going backwards. Oh, I can't stop. I'm in reverse again. There you go. Surprisingly, T-Bob and Scott do not show up in the animated promo which preceded the show. One of T-Bob's best puns may occur during the episode Riddle of the Raven Master. Whilst hanging on for dear life from the hands of the world-famous clock Big Ben, T-Bob references the classic movie Gone with the Wind, referring to legendary actor Clark Gable as Clock Gable. Get it? Memorably, in the unique action-packed episode Fog on Boulder Hill, we see T-Bob all alone fight the agents of Venom. In a rather unique moment in the UK comic, a wise old Indian man helped T-Bob regain his memory. Huh. We learn in the episode Curse of Solomon's Gorge that T-Bob has a rocket installed in his posterior, which could have come in useful a handful of times in the series. T-Bob appeared on the cover of many a UK Mars comic, though it could be argued that his appearance on the cover of issue 8 of the DC comic book, relaxing on the hood of Hurricane, surrounded by bikini-clad women, may have been the most striking. Although he is confident in his abilities, to the point of arrogance, T-Bob is a terrible gondolier. A unique feature T-Bob had was that he could sharpen pencils. It may seem pointless, which sounds like a T-Bob pun, but in the episode Quest of the Canyon, it turned out to be rather useful. In the episode The Currency Conspiracy, T-Bob not only demonstrates that he can ski incredibly well, but also that he can ice skate. And yes, the little robot is indeed rocking lederhosen. When T-Bob's linkage unit is faulty, it causes him to sneeze and have symptoms much like a human cold. He refers to this as him having the flu, the FLU as he calls it, a faulty linkage unit. Clever. And finally, as much as it may pain some to hear, T-Bob is one of my favourite characters from 1980s animation. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe.